Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Friday, November 22nd, 2013. We begin with an update from the world of technology as it applies to energy. Two things that don't often mix are biotechnology and batteries, but some researchers from MIT found a way. They have successfully developed a potential battery electrode material using a virus. Now, the material isn't made of viruses, but they are used in the construction process. As you probably guessed, these aren't normal viruses. They are specially modified to capture metal molecules in solution and bind them to a solid structure, which results in a network of highly textured metal nanowires, in this case, made from manganese oxide. Previous work had been done with these kinds of nanowires, but constructing them with viruses has a number of advantages. The aforementioned texturing gives the virus-made structure a massive increase in surface area, increasing the potential speed for charge and discharge cycles. Conventional fabrication also doesn't create the more stable interconnected wires that the viruses naturally do and using a biological process allows for the use of a water-based system rather than a chemical one that needs large amounts of energy and harsh chemicals. After construction, the manganese oxide is coated in a small amount of the precious metal palladium to drastically increase its electrical conductivity. With their unique structure, the researchers were able to use less of this expensive metal in the final electrode. Although encouraging, it's just the first step, as this material is only being investigated for the cathode of a lithium air battery. Other advanced materials need to be developed for the electrolyte, the anode, and other components. But such a battery may result in extremely high energy density, allowing for devices like electric cars to have significantly extended ranges. Next is an update from the world of material science as it applies to medicine. Last week, we talked about a new material that was being developed to help regenerate bone. This week, a different material that was also being investigated for bone-related purposes, don't laugh, may actually help those with brain cancer. Scientists from the University of Nottingham have been investigating a polymer for the slow release of chemotherapy drugs after surgery. Many instances of relapse occur with brain cancer due to surgeons being unable to remove all of the tumor cells present, since it's literally brain surgery. But this unique mix of polymer nanoparticles may be the key to solving that issue. It starts off as a powder, but can be mixed into a paste by adding water. From there, it can be used to fill in the cavity left after the brain tumor removal. One of the things that makes this material unique is that it forms a more solid structure at human body temperature. Chemotherapy drugs can be added to this mixture and slowly released into the former tumor location from this solid polymer mass. Initial testing only involved learning how slowly the drugs were released from the polymer in a saline solution. Then, they demonstrated safety by growing brain and blood vessel cells right on the polymer, as well as multiple animal tests, including simulated brain surgery on a sheep. They even stuck the stuff into the brain of a medical training dummy to make sure radiation didn't dissolve the polymer. The scientists think this material may allow for the eradication of any stray brain cancer, while the slow release will alleviate some of the unfortunate side effects of these drugs. Because this is a delivery method and not a drug itself, it may be implemented slightly faster. They hope to have a phase zero trial in about three years to test the polymer with the drugs in patients who have had no success with other treatment options. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In relation to our first story, what unique function would you use viruses for? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.